Hey everybody, how's it going? Well, I'm going to do another slideshow. A while back, uh, the last one I did, I made a little video of that about what it takes to put one of those together. And uh, some people thought that was pretty interesting, and uh, a lot of you probably didn't see it. So I'm going to make another one. It's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to do this one a little bit differently. But uh, this one will be about uh, my career. It's a lot of photographs of places I work, people I worked with. Uh, things we were involved in, derailments, crashes, whatever. This is th this will be in no particular order. This is not going to be a timeline starting back in 79 or any of that. I will just put them up as they come up. I will be trying to keep groups of photographs uh, of the same thing. If there are more than a couple of photographs, I'll try to keep those uh, together. Okay. I am in the process of editing the photographs uh, in my program, in my editing program. And what I've had to do is use my phone as my camera, take pictures of all these photographs, and then load them. They would be on my phone, load them from the phone onto my SD card, and then move them from my SD card into my editing program. Then I've got to take them out one at a time and edit those photographs and this is my script right here. As I see the photographs, I write down what I want to say. Then I kind of time myself how long it's going to say, take to say that. And then make sure that that photograph stays up long enough for me to say that. So this is the, let's see, the next photograph will be this one here. And this is Mike Maxidon. Working on, it looks like he's splicing a switch cable. This is at Fresno at the Kern Street crossover when they changed those out. Probably take me about five or six seconds to say what's in this picture. So I'm going to make this eight seconds long. Just in case I get tongue-tied, then I'll take this. And since it's in format, uh, uh, portrait format. It's going to have a border in it, but that's all right. And I'll write down what I'm going to say. Okay, Mike Maxidon wiring a U5 box at the Kern Street crossover in Fresno in 2017. All right, the next photo I want to use. This one is Eddie Vasquez, Jack Heath, and Fufu Joe. I cannot remember Joe's Last name. He was a really, really cool guy. These were track guys. But they're uh, replacing an insulated joint, putting an insulated joint in. This was down between Waylong and Woodford. I'm not going to show me doing this again. I've already seen it, but I remember that day when I took that picture. Uh, they were just starting to lay ribbon rail. This was in 80, let's see, this was in 1987, and they were just starting to put ribbon rail everywhere on the mountain. Prior to that, they were transposing 78-foot joints almost every day. All right. Something else that I forgot to mention is that I decided for uh, some of these photographs uh, individually and some of, as, a, as a whole, I've done some real short video clips to explain some of the things that were happening when these photographs were taken, uh, some of the humorous stories, and then some of the stuff that was just going on. So, uh, those have yet to be put in here. I still have to take those. I'll get all the photograph part of it done, and then I will load the videos that I recorded, the clips I recorded, and stick those. I'll have to take those off the phone, put those on the chip, that to the computer. You can't take that straight off the phone. Uh, you can't load it into the program off the phone. It just, for whatever reason, it doesn't let you do that. So I have to load it onto a disk and then onto the editing program. So I'll have to put those in there, get that all set up, get those fades done, and then uh, I will render it and get everything put in there. So well, here we go. This is Nate Stevens on the Tolera Gang replacing stolen code line at Delano in 2007. This is looking down at the truck from 40 feet up in the bucket. Here's Bruce Shangarth repairing damaged line wire in Bakersfield in 2009.
This is Kelso maintainer Richard Brown after tangling with a can of paint on the SEMA sub at Chase in 1999. Okay, uh, Richard Brown was the Kelso maintainer, and he was a really cool guy, but he was pretty finicky. And uh, he and I, John Warm and a guy named Pat Wild, were out bonding rail in a siding and jointed rail siding out on the SEMA sub and on a siding called Chase. And uh, John Warm was going along with the meter with these probes, a little trick little thing he'd set up to find high resistance uh, joints. And when he'd find one, he would put a little yellow dot next to it with a yellow spray paint. And then Richard would come along and he would, for whatever reason, he wanted to get black spray paint, paint over the little yellow dot, and then he and I were putting on the railhead bonds. And his spray can, his black spray can was all plugged up. And he said, hey, you know, I said, I got some back on my truck. Let me go get him. He goes, oh, this still has paint in it. You know, you can poke a little hole in the top of these and, you know, just kind of hold your finger over. And I said, don't worry about that. So I went to get the paint out of my truck and I heard a and heard Johnny and Pat just start cracking up. And I walked around and Richard had that paint all over him. And he had safety glasses on, as you can see in the photo. And I just had to take a photo of it. So that's the story behind that photo. Here's a westbound Santa Fe going under the old signal bridge at West Waylong in 1986. Here's some photographs from the first derailment I ever worked. This was in July of 1984 and it was caused by a rail breaking under an eastbound Santa Fe at Cliff. I love to get it together on this reefer. The uh, derailment happened on the main line but it pushed out this, this is where the spur track was connected to the siding. You see how it pushed that whole location out. This uh, first derailment one here, the first derailment I worked, uh, it happened right at seven in the morning, uh, actually a little before that. We uh, were called by Bill Stoko. I was working with Jerry Baines that day. He came and picked me up and Bill told us just to go straight down there. And we were the first people to get there. And the uh, engineer was standing there when we pulled up where the locomotive was. And uh, there was only one car behind the locomotive that wasn't derailed. The next 20 cars or so were derailed. Uh, the train's going uphill. And the guy comes over and he goes, Man, I was only going 21 miles an hour. And Jerry goes, oh, You're pleading your case to the wrong guys. Uh, we're just here to see what we can do. And uh, I always thought that was funny. And it was my first derailment, and I was in awe. I had never seen anything you can see in these pictures, the devastation. This is signal technician Greg Smith troubleshooting a GCP 300 at Hay Street in Tehachapi in 1992. This is Pascual Munoz, who was the Bakersfield gang foreman at the time, at the Bealville derailment in 1990. Here are a couple of the track guys at the Bealville derailment, and I can't recall their names. Uh, this derailment at Bealville was a string line, and it, when it pulled it off the inside of the curve there, it wiped out our pole line. And so we had, we strung cable out on the ground trying to get things going again, and we ran some cable through a small culvert and had to out into a field out of the way. We had to splice that together. Me and my buddy Don Ehler, who I still go have coffee with once a week or so, uh, they put us on that splice, and we didn't want to get in. We wanted to do as little as possible. So we just, we got the splice done pretty quickly. It was a 14 conductor cable, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we got it done pretty quickly. But every time somebody would come by and say, hey, are you guys done yet? No, 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 man, we're having trouble getting this put together. They'd leave and we'd just sit there and shoot the breeze for a while. So we did, Don Eler and I did the world's most time consuming splice of number 14 cable in the history of the railroad. Here is Mike Maxidon wiring a U5 box at the Kern Street crossover in Fresno in 2017. Eddie Vasquez, Fufu Joe, and Jack Heath finish up installing an insulated joint between Woodford and Waylong in 1987. This is a derailment on the horseshoe curve at Caliente in 2002. A BNSF straight lined it. Here, crews are cleaning up a, a derailment that had occurred a couple of weeks earlier below the loop in 1987. This was the second derailment I worked. 
It was August 1984, and a broken axle caused this one. The late Steve Green points out a seriously broken rail at Rowan in 1986. Here you see Troy McWhorter and John Sparks chatting at Vineland Avenue, east of Bakersfield, in 1985. This was my boss, Roger Rico, out at Highland in 1998. Here we see Lee Dillard, the Yummer maintainer, Jim Whitrock, a signal tech, and John Warm, the Nipton signal maintainer, replacing a broken signal foundation at Harbor Road on the SEMA sub in 1999. This is a thermite field well just as it starts flowing into the mold in 1986. This is Pat Wilde and John Warm just after Richard Brown's paint fiasco. They're still laughing. This is my late buddy Philip Silva near Mojave in 1995. We lost him to cancer in 2011. This is John Drake at North Bakersfield in 1995. We were replacing a dwarf signal with a tall signal. As the foreman, I get to do cool jobs like running this backhoe at North Bakersfield in 1995. Here we were replacing some bad underground at Willow Avenue Crossing on the Zone 5 branch in Fresno in 2011. This is Dave Fagundes preparing to wire some cable at Avenue 56 in Early Mart in 2010. Lee Taylor and Mike Maxidon prepare to pull wires into a new gate junction box at Road 25 Avenue 13 crossing on the Madero Winery Branch in 2012 after a knockdown. Mike Maxidon and Dave Fagundes were the Teleri gang and repaired this knockdown at the ATSF crossing at Calwa in 2009. Another one of the things that you'll hear me uh, mention a lot in here are knockdowns. Knockdowns are at crossings when cars knock down our equipment, whether it's just a set of flashers, a gate, cantilevers. We've had to fix them all over the years, and sometimes trains will hit cars and the cars will spin off and wipe out uh, sometimes the entire crossing. But anyway, that's what a knockdown is. Here's another knockdown, this time at South K Street on the Tulare Industrial Lead in Tulare in 2012. Big Mike again, this time tying in some new AC at Slater in 2008. This was in early March, about 2012. I got stuck, then Steve Smith, who we called Bones, tried to rescue me and got stuck, and we both ended up having to be pulled out by a tow truck. Here's Mike Maxidon looking up, making sure I don't just make things worse at Herndon in 2013. This truck ended up on the old McGundan siding when he overcooked the turn from Weed Patch Highway onto Edison Highway in 2013, the driver walked away. This is me on the backhoe at Kawa about 2010, and no, I did not dig that perfect ditch. One thing I want to mention is that uh, you'll see some photographs in here of uh, trenches that we were digging to put in underground cable, splicing underground cable, splicing overhead wires, overhead cable. Uh, between 2002 about and 2014 or 15 when we finally started getting the new microprocessor processor signal systems put in it was a constant fight with the cable thieves they would steal anything and everything that they could reach and some things that they they would build pallet uh, stacks in the backs of pickups to reach our lines and stuff and steal that stuff and if we would lay it out just temporarily while we were waiting to bury it underground they would steal that it was an ongoing battle and uh, that's when you see the trenches and stuff whenever they would steal our overhead wire if they stole it more than once we would either bury it underground or while we were waiting to do that we would use sprinkler cable cheap spring wasn't cheap but it was sprinkler cable tacked to the ties between the rails to replace the cable that they continually stole this is Phil Silva, Don Ehler, and Randy Taylor at the Bakersfield office in 2004. It looks like Randy is the ref for one of their pissing contests. 
These next two photos are of an accident slash knockdown in Delano, California in 2009. A woman was on her cell phone and she plowed through the gate into the side of a train with her child in a car seat in the back. Fortunately, both ended up being okay. And here, Dave and Nate prepare the flasher that she knocked down. Phil Silva and Nate Stevens finish up an M23 switch machine change out at Tulare in 2008. Here Nate splices a cable near Tulare in 2007. Here I am charging batteries at a signal near Madeira after the AC wires were stolen in 2010. I found this broken rail at Illman in 2019. The track inspector said it was good for five miles an hour. This is me and John Sparks at the Tatchby Signal Office in 1988. Today, this is the gift shop at the Tatchby Depot Museum. Here's John Warren climbing a pole in Afton Canyon in 1999. This is looking north from the Stockton Yardmaster's Tower in 2003. This prune harvester lost its brakes and hit a train at Olive Avenue in Tipton, California in 2016. The operator jumped off and wasn't hurt. These two photos are from Olive Drive in Bakersfield where we were upgrading a gate mech in 2017. These signals in Fresno were just a few of the ones we scrapped in 2015 during the PTC signal system upgrade. This derailment happened between Tunnel 7 and West Cable in 2017. I don't recall the cause. Phil Silva explains things to Jeremy Dury with his back to us and our instructor, whose name I can't recall, at the UP Signal Training Lab in Chicago in 2008. Here I am on a very hot, dirty day after trenching and burying cable in Madera, California. Here's Dave Fagundes at the Tulare Industrial Lead Switch in 2018. We were doing a switch inspection. Here I am doing some line work near Marcel in 1986. This is the Palmdale Gangs truck at the cable crossover in 1986. I can't tell who the two men on the ground are. This is one of the only photos I ever took out on the Colton Cutoff. This is near Highland at the top of Cajon Pass in 1998. This is the Tatchby Extra Gang transposing rail between Marcel and Cable in 1985. They did this every day. These photos here of the Tatchby Extra Gang, and I said that they did that work every day. They did. They were transposing 78 foot jointed rail and they would pull large sections of it off and to transpose it they would take the rail from one side move it to the other side and, and vice versa and that way the rail instead of all wearing all that way would wear this way and then when it got to a certain tolerances they would have to actually change the rail out and when they actually did that i went up there in 84 and they started putting in ribbon rail around the end of 86 and continued that uh, after that point they never uh, transposed rail again when the rail wore out they would just put ribbon rail in this is how signalmen play Twister. I actually think this is a knockdown at Manning Avenue near Fowler in 2010. This was my very first maintainer's truck when I was attached to the maintainer. This was an 84 Chevy. What a piece of crap it was. This was my 1996 Chevy 3500. It had a 454 in it. This is at Venice Avenue in Fresno. This thing was a beast. This was my 2004 Chevy Silverado 2500 4x4. It was a really nice truck. I liked it. This was my 2011 Dodge. It was in the shop so much that it was pulled from the fleet in 2013. I got a 2014 Dodge after this. Still a Dodge, but it was a little bit better.
This is typical of what SP had us driving on the project I was hired for in 1979. This one was pulled over by the CHP out in the desert and deemed unsafe to drive. We never saw it again. This was in Chowchilla in 2011 when a hay truck tried to beat a 50 mile an hour train. No one was injured, but hey. <laughs> this is Jerry Baines and Ed Lamb digging in cable at Mojave in 1979. Left to right, this is Steve Green, Jerry Baines, and myself at the Tatchby Signal Office in 1985. Here Steve Green applies a railhead bond out near Monolith as a track man looks on in 1986. A truck swerved to avoid a stopped car and took out the case and location pole at Olive Avenue here in Tipton in 2011. No one was injured. Here's a knockdown at Olive Drive in Bakersfield in 2012. Most of the rest of the photographs you're going to see were taken by Bill Stoko uh, during the uh, 1979 and 80 project that I was hired out to work on, which was installing uh, PMTC uh, circuitry to run the CTC between Mojave and West Colton. And as you saw in one of the other videos that I had, if you saw that, I uh, got these pictures out of Bill's scrapbook that his widow gave me when Bill passed away in 1999. Here's Bill Stoko on a block signal somewhere out in the desert, acting like he's doing something important. Here's Gang 9 working at East Lancaster in 1979. When the project ended, this gang and this signal both went away. Track and signal gangs install new ties and a new M23 switch machine at West End Cell between Mojave and Roseman in 1980. Setting an intermediate signal in 1979. The westbound signal here would be the approach to Palmdale 2. I'm the one with my arms folded across my chest. Uh, this particular photograph was taken on a day when the Southern Pacific Bulletin people were out there. And the SP Bulletin was the company uh, magazine that was put out monthly. And uh, they were doing a piece on the CTC project that we were out there working on. This job, setting this intermediate signal, should have taken from the time we rolled up there till the time we set the signal and got it wired up and ready to test should have taken no more than two or three hours. And we were out there almost the entire morning while these guys waited for the sun to get in the right places. And they wanted to have people who looked just right. They didn't want to have goofy guys like me with big bushy hair and uh, guys with scroungy clothes or whatever. Everybody had to look just right. And it was just a big hassle. I was really new still when they did this. And I didn't understand all the hoopla. I just wanted to get the thing done and uh, get everything done before it got any hotter because it was during the summer. Here John Sparks applies a railhead bond while I look on in 1980. I think this was at East End Cell. I shot this from a high rail truck in Fresno in 2006. The Palmdale game prepares for a day of line work at Mojave in 1980. The locomotive and caboose are on the former A&P main line. The Palmdale gang and some electricians set solar panels at a PMTC repeater location near Highland in 1980. This photograph with the solar panel, uh, a lot of these areas where we put, especially the repeater locations, a lot of these areas were very remote. Uh, the siding, the ends of the sidings at Wash, uh, places way out in the desert, there was nothing out there. There was no AC service anywhere out there. And so when we would set these locations, we would put solar panels out there. And in some cases, uh, uh, gas generators, wind generators, anything to try to keep the uh, batteries charged out there. And we had a tough time. It was, uh, they were vandalized. They were stolen. It was, uh, it was hard to keep things uh, going out there. But that's why you see them setting solar panels at this uh, repeater location. And the repeaters for the PMTC Pulse modulated track circuit didn't have a lot of range, 
So on the long stretches, the two mile stretches, they put a repeater out in the middle so that when the signal got there, it would be uh, amplified and sent on down to the receivers. This last photo is of Santa Fe with a Kodachrome in the consist, passing our work zone at East Woodford in 1987. That's our whacker tamper next to the switch. All right, well, my next step is to take all these photographs and put the fade at the beginning and the end and then in between each photograph. I'm going to do a two second fade in here at the beginning and then I will put a one second fade between each photograph. A lot of times I'll do two seconds, but when the photographs are this close together, most of these are no longer, uh, they're between six and ten seconds. Some are a little longer than that, but when you have that many photographs, using a two second fade takes up a lot of time. One second's all that's necessary, in my opinion. But now I've got to do that for every one of these photographs, and I have 74 photographs in this slideshow. So, uh, that won't take me that awful long, but it has taken me a few hours from the time I started this until where I am right now. I did take a break for dinner, but it's taken me, I've worked on this for about four hours now, and the script is uh, quite a few pages long. And uh, the next thing, after I put all these uh, fades in, the next step will be narrating it. Well, it is the next day. I didn't finish this last night. Obviously, I got everything done but the narration. The narration's quite time consuming and has to be done in box on this one rather than one straight through. Uh, doesn't matter, this is probably easier. I've never done it this way, but being broken up with clips makes sure you don't have to stay in time so long. But anyway, I wanted to do just kind of go shoot a little piece of how the narration goes on a short block. So, uh, Got to get the narration tool turned on. Get your parameters set up. Get your script ready. Here's another knockdown, this time at South K Street on the Tulare Industrial Lead in Tulare in 2012. Big Mike again, this time tying in some new AC at Slater in 2008. This is me on the backhoe at Cowell about 2010. And no, I did not dig that perfect ditch. Okay, that's all done. Uh, only got a couple of more pieces to narrate and I'll be all finished. And you'll all be shit of me. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, had a lot of fun making it? Nah. These things can be a real pain. They're very time consuming and labor intensive this way and this way, but uh, always rewarding. I, when I'm done with the slideshow, I'm always glad I did it. I'm glad I stuck with it. I have a, quite a few more slideshow ideas that I'm going to do as, a time co as time goes along. Uh, some about maps and timetables and uh, more photograph, uh, personal photograph stuff, trains, people, places, and also, as I've said, I'm trying to get my Patreon account going. Uh, so far, I still only have three patrons, but uh, if I can get that uh, going, I'll do polls on there to see what you guys all want to see and what you'd like to uh, have me do, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So go on over to my Patreon account, check that out, consider becoming a member, and here is the URL. Uh, Keep shooting me the ideas. Drop in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motorpoet59 <laughs> at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. And we'll see you all later.